anajulikana kama Kenya's most feared and ruthless policeman. After kuterrorize wezi kwa miaka mingi sana hii Nairobi. Alikuwa naogopwa na kupendwa in equal measure. But kabla ni kuchambulia hii story, tafadhali naomba usisahau kusubscribe, ku like na kuweka notifications zako on ndio usiwahi miss an update. Hii ni Trending East Africa. Twende kazi. After Kenya kujinyakulia uhuru na kuweza kujitawala, miaka zile zilifuata baadaye. Slowly but surely, visa za uhalifu na wizi wa kimabavu zikaanza kujitokeza kila mahali. A famous case being ya John Kiriamiti, which ni me discuss story yake at length na video naweza ipata kwa hii channel. At that time, jija Nairobi ilikuwa inazama deep into crime. Na kitu watu walikuwa hawajui ni that London ilikuwa inajitayarisha kuleta mtu yule atamaliza uwizi ama kuipunguza kwa kiasi fulani. So in 1955, kijana wa 19 years by the name of Patrick Shaw akaland Kenya for the first time. In order for yeye kujifamiliarize na environment yake mpya, wabeberu walimchukua na wakamwandika kazi kama ofisa wa kilimo pande za Rift Valley. Alifanyio kazi kwa miaka nne then akaiwacha. Akaenda kaajiri wa St John Ambulance. Akiwa 23 years, aliapply na akafanikiwa kujoin Kenya Police Reserve in 1959 na akapewa nickname Romeo 9. Akiendelea kutumikia serikali kama karao, alikutana na Geoffrey Griffin ambaye alikuwa ndio mwanzilishi na director wa Starehe Boys Center na akamwandika job kama school administrator. Kwa wale walimuona, show alikuwa ni jitu la mtu. Height yake pekee ilikuwa ni 6 feet na alikuwa na weigh 136 kilograms. Despite hiyo uzito yake yote, alikuwa very athletic na alikuwa bado anaweza toana mbio na wezi. Born in 1936 huko London, Patrick Shaw alipoteza baba yake sababu ya tuberculosis akiwa bado mtoto mdogo. Na growing up, alikuwa anachukia sana kwenda shule sabu ma students wengine walikuwa wanapenda kumbuli na kumek fun sabu ya wit yake so the moment alipata job kama administrator wa stare boys ali make sure kuna zero tolerance on bullying kwa kila kitu anafanya alikuwa na demand very high standards for instance kuna siku kuta ya shule ilikuwa imejengwa vibaya patrick show alikasirika akaenda kailalia mpaka ikabomoka then akaoda fundi aitwe tena aijenge vile inafaa back in those days Nairobi ilikuwa ni hub ya wezi na bank robberies zilikuwa zinafanyika mchana kila mtu akiona na makarao walikuwa na hard time ku deal na wezi mpaka sikualifika bila kupoteza wakati show al hit the ground running na alikuwa na patrol street za Nairobi akiwa peke yake akingoja kukumbana na wahalifu off days hazikuwa zina exist kwa vocabulary yake na kama ni kulala alikuwa anajiwekelea for two hours pekee but more investigations inasema reason ya kutolala kwa masaa mengi ni sababu alikuwa anasafa from glandular disorder yeye ndio polisi wa kwanza kuja na studi ya kukupea fare kama wewe ni muizi uende ushago la sivyo atakuua gari yake Volvo KFH 845 ilikuwa custom made ndio aweze kutoshia vizuri nawe na nafasi ya kuweka vitu zake kama radio ya polisi na bunduki mara nyingi alikuwa anashinda ndani ya hiyo gari akisoma manual za FBI kumemorize picha za wahalifu na pia kukram penal code ya Kenya makarao wenzake walikuwa namjua kama sharp shooter na kuna type ya bunduki alikuwa hajui anytime anaengage wa gundi in shootouts alikuwa na count ni bullets ngapi wamefiatua Then wakiwa karibu kuishiwa ana swing into action na kuaminia. Maspies alikuwa nao kwa wingi na the most trusted walikuwa students wake wa Stare Boys ambao walikuwa nicknamed Show Boys. Na kutaka ku get deeper into dealing za crime ndani ya mitaa, ali employ street boys kama ma informer wake. Mr. Show alikuwa ndio the judge, jury and the executioner. 
na kuna tema member of parliament ali complain that kuna mzungu anatawala police force the justice minister tio time ali muonya vikali sana na kamwambia kae mbali na siwai dhubutu tena ku criticize huyu karao despite shock wengi za wagondi wengi baridi kuna wale walikuwa muogopi hata kidogo case in point ni mwizi moja by the name of Danson Gashui Danson Gashui alikuwa Nairobi's most wanted criminal na alikuwa accused of 10 robberies murder na kuibia polisi wawili bunduki zao at gunpoint zaidi ya hiyo alikuwa ame survive two shootouts na makarao so ikaanza kumfanya feel yeye ni immortal na ka challenge patik show kama kona roho wa kutane wa fetulia ne marisasi so danson na kichwa yake ngumu akaishia kaibagari and later wakaanza kukimzana na makarao area za south sea vile aliona makarao amemfikia akaruka nje ya gari na akiwa na bunduki zake mbili akaanza ku exchange fire na polisi show alikuwa monga wa makarao na kangoja the perfect time na kampiga risasi ndani ya mdomo akaanguka hapo hapo another hardcore criminal alikuwa Nicholas Mwea aka wa Kinyonga wa Kinyonga ali come into the limelight after kuwa CEO wa Total mchana kila mtu akimwona alikuwa anajua naishi on borrowed time so alienda na kajichimbia kaburi na kaanza kuwa mlevi chakari so siku moja afta ametoka kuiba akaamua kwenda kupatia mwili pole wakiwa na demu yake club flani hapo Kangemi kama kawaida my informer wa show akamti pof that wa Kinyonga ako area show hak waste time na in a few minutes alikuwa shafika amekuwa kubunduki na kuamurisha wa Kinyonga surrender but instead akaamua kufietua risasi hiyo decision ili prove kuwa fatal because in a space of 10 minutes mwili yake ilikuwa imejaa mashimo ya risasi after kuwa wa Kinyonga Mr. Show alienda mazishi yake na watu wakiwa katikati ya kuzikana akasimamisha hiyo ceremony na akaonwezi wote wale walikuwa wameattendio burial that kama wanapenda maisha yao wasidhubutu kukanyaga Nairobi tena kulikuwa pia na muizi by the name of Slim na kikundi yake ile ilikuwa inajiita Disciples of Jesus na alikuwa accused of kuwa watu wa msini na mbili. Huyu jamaa anytime anashikwa alikuwa always na mbinu za kutoka jela na at one time pia ali threaten kuwa Patrick Show. Akiwa kamiti miezi zake za mwisho ndio achiliwe, Show aliamua kwenda kumtembelea na kampatia warning pia that asijaribu kukanyaga Nairobi tena. Lakini akapuuza na immediately alitoka ndani akarudi kwa uwizi. So siku moja akiwa na beste yake wakizurura mjini watu hawajulikani walikuja wakawashika na wakawapeleka hadi Karura Forest na kuwapiga marisasi. Watu wengi believe that show ndio alitoa hizo orders za execution. But sio kila time Mr. Show ndio alikuwa kusema. Kuna siku pia Pwagu hupatana na Pwaguzi. Cuz in 1979 kuna muizi na muwaji kutoka Uganda by the name of Walimba ambaye alienda na kaua family moja Nairobi. Immediately show alipata hizo 411, alikimbia straight hadi kwa crime scene. Lakini bila kubeba silaha yoyote, na akakuta walimba bado yuko hapo. Katika hizo vurugu na rapsha, show alipigwa risasi ya mabega na walimba kaingia mitini. Hata baada ya kupigwa risasi, Patrick Show alijiendesha hadi kwa hospitali, akatibiwa na kajipeleka nyumbani. Since your day hakuwaitembea bila bunduki kuna rumors zilikuwa zinasema that time that show alikuwa pia contracted ku deal na wanasiasa wale walikuwa nasumbua the sitting government most notably JM Karioki ule ambaye alikuwa murdered in 1975 na kuna whispers zinasema that huyu Karao ali play a part in it in 1988 at 52 years Patrick Show akiwa ametoka kufanya his daily patrols aliamua ku pass by kwa nyumba ya the former police commissioner na akiwa ameshikilia wokitoki yake akingoja further instructions akapigwa na heart attack akaanguka chini na akakufa mazishi yake iliatendiwa na wizi wengi sana na reason ilikuwa tu ku confirm that ni ukweli huyu Karao amededi na vile alikufa uwizi karudi na ikaongezeka Reasons za kuwawezi according to shows ilikuwa ni simple. Alikuwa anaamini that asipofanya hivyo, hawa wagundi wangepea na hongo wakiwa ndani, watoke, then warudi huko nje kuangaisha raia tena. 
at his death alikuwa tayari ni recipient wa silver star from president moi kama umeenjoy hii segment kindly usisahau kusubscribe ku like na kushare hii video na kama kuna story ungetaka tukuchapie tuambie ni gani by leaving a comment down below